Good morning, everyone. Um, I know this is a bit out of the ordinary. Normally, our welcome comes uh, from the, the internet, <laughs> the world of uh, cyberspace, but we've had um, a bit of an unfortunate uh, set of circumstances where Damon, our, our te wonderful technician, um, kind of got stuck <laughs> in his travels this weekend. We want to give a warm thanks to his friend Joe, who was filling in on the console, um, but it has meant that we are tweaking a little bit of how we do um, the online portion of our worship this morning. Um, so I just wanted to let you all know that and thank Joe. And um, the gift of St. Michael's I have found is that we are so able to roll with, roll with things as they come. And so I know that will be part of the Spirit's presence in our worship this morning. Welcome to all of you, those here in the sanctuary and those of you online. It is a blessing to be gathered in this hybrid space, both in person and online. If you're worshiping with us online and you want to participate in the Holy Eucharist, which will happen later in the service, go ahead and find something simple to eat and drink, and you can participate symbolically in that part of the service uh, when it comes up. And if you are new, if you are visiting with us for the first time or um, new to St. Michael's, uh, we extend a warm welcome to you and want to get to know you a little better. So stay tuned. We'll tell you more about how we can be in touch later in the service. And now, friends, take a breath. Let yourselves be present here in this space, this blessed hybrid online in-person St. Michael's space, and let us worship God together. God, most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity. Together we pray, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the prophet Jeremiah. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? I do not, do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name and say, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back? Those who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart. They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell a dream but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? The word of the Lord. Good morning, St. Michael's. My name is Barry O'Neill. Our second reading is from the letter to the Hebrews. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. 
But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more can I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death, they were sawn in two, they were killed by the sword, and they went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all of these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross regarding its shame and, was, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to the earth and how I wish it was already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided. Three against two and two against three, they will be divided father against son and son against father, 
mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law. And the daughter, he also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so we were a little late to the game, but my husband and I finally got to see the Broadway show Hades Town a few weeks ago. I don't know, has anybody seen it? Some hands are going up. Okay, cool. Um, so if you haven't seen it, spoiler alert, it's a modern retelling of the tragedy of Orpheus and Eurydice. So no spoiler alert, really, because uh, this is an ancient <laughs> tale that people kind of here as they go through school. So uh, the cliff notes um, are that Orpheus falls in love and marries Eurydice. Uh, Eurydice then dies and then grief-stricken Orpheus goes to the underworld to try to bring her back and Hades, the god of the underworld, allows him to bring Eurydice back with him on one condition which is that he cannot, as, as she follows him out of the underworld, he is not allowed to turn around and look behind him to check and see if she is still there. And if he does, she will be destined to live in the underworld forever. And so as the trip from the underworld back to the land of the living progresses, Orpheus gets more and more mistrusting and anxious that she is, whether, whether she's there or not behind him, more skeptical, more uncertain, uh, and at the very last minute, he can't take it anymore. And he turns around to see her standing right there. She's been there all along and then dooms her to an eternity in the underworld. So, spoiler alert. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but the thing about, I mean, a lot of people know this story before they go to see the show. So the thing is, like, a lot of people, audience members, you go into this show knowing how it's going to end. And yet, what's, what Jeremy and I were remarking about afterwards was that what was so good about it and what really stood out to us was that even though you know how it's going to end, it was done so well that you are still just absolutely crushed the moment he, Orpheus turns around and sees Eurydice right there where she's been all along because as the audience, you know she's there, right? Um, and you just, you find, as the audience member, you're kind of going, my God, if only, come on, Orpheus, if only you could trust, if only you could just trust that she was still there. If only you knew what we knew. 57 years ago today, an Episcopal Seminary student named Jonathan Myrick Daniels was arrested, along with several others, after taking part in a civil rights protest in Alabama. After they were jailed for six days, Jonathan and three others that he was with, a Catholic pr priest and two black teenage girls, were unexpectedly released from jail. And uh, aware that they were in danger, uh, the four of them walked nearby to a small store. And as 16-year-old Ruby Sales, who was one of the four of them, reached the top step of that store, a man with a gun appeared cursing her, and Jonathan, seeing the danger, pulled her aside and took the bullet that was intended for her, and he was killed instantly. Today is his feast day in the Episcopal Church. What made this privileged white man from New England leave the comfort of his life and join the civil rights movement was the call of Martin Luther King Jr. to come to Selma and to secure for all citizens the right to vote. And he found the conviction and the inspiration to do so in the Song of Mary, the Magnificat. 
quoting Daniel's, he says, he hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things. I knew that I must go to Selma. The virgin's song was to grow more and more dear to me in the weeks ahead. And I don't think it is without meaning that tomorrow is the feast day of the Virgin Mary. Jonathan Daniels knew, as Martin Luther King had told those who joined the fight for civil rights, that he would not necessarily see the fruits of his labor. He knew that walking the treacherous road to justice did not guarantee that he would see the promised land. What he did know was that he had to trust that God was right there behind him. Keep going. Don't look back. Don't let your doubts make you lose sight of where you're headed. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab did not perish. By faith, God's people conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises. By faith, Jonathan Daniel stepped in between a young black girl and an angry white man and his gun. And as the letter to the Hebrews says, yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised. Martin Luther King, Jonathan Daniels, countless others lost their lives before seeing the better world that they were fighting for. I think that is a concept that is harder and harder for us to grasp. In a world of guaranteed results and instant gratification, to commit yourself to an action or a cause or a path and not have the payoff makes it foolish to even justify the effort to think that it's worth it at all. And to live for God's promise and not receive what is promised well, that can make seem, God seem far off and not close by. Like maybe God doesn't actually keep God's promises. And when that happens, when we go from doubt to mistrust, then we get blinded from a bigger picture. Do you think that I've come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. Jesus tells of the division that will occur when we follow him. Division even within households, mother against daughter, father against son. But it's no accident that Jesus puts the family at the center of the division that he brings. The household was the fundamental building block of society in his day. And in proclaiming that he brings division and that division will threaten the household and it will fracture families, Jesus shows us that his mission is not to maintain the status quo or validate human institutions, but to trample them with God's radical will. God's dream for this world threatens the stability of all of the structures that we hold near and dear. And the less we trust in God and each other, the more division we will see. And where this leaves me to wonder is, whether this division is prescriptive or descriptive. Has Jesus truly come to bring division? Is that truly God's mission and dream for us? Or is division simply the inevitable result of Jesus' mission? Is division what Jesus wants? Or is it what he knows will happen when people choose to follow him? The text itself suggests that the division Jesus brings is the result of following him, that his radical challenge of the status quo and existing societal structures will naturally sow division among his followers. You don't have to look too hard around us to see evidence of that all around. Division is not the wind in Jesus' sails, but it follows in his wake. And I must ask, does that make it any better? Whether division is God's intent for us or not, the fact remains it is a natural byproduct of our faith. How is that good news? And perhaps an even more difficult follow-up question, does that mean that when division begins, the gospel is actually at work among us? 
Those are hard questions, but I think the answer might lie somewhere in an inventory of our own inner workings. How large our capacity to trust really is. How wide angle of a lens we look through. Are we Orpheus, less and less trusting of what we can't see? Or are we Jonathan Daniels, trusting in a goal that might stretch beyond our life's horizon? How can I be sure that the promised land will arrive one day? How can I trust that you're right behind me, God, when there is no proof until we get there? How can I follow you when I can't be sure I will ever know if it was all worth it? By faith, others before us have walked this road of holding the long view, of working for a reward their descendants will enjoy, a great cloud of witnesses who inspire us to keep going. It is worth noting that these ancestors in the faith are not people who necessarily succeeded at what they set out to do or receive the promise God made, and that we do not see those efforts as futile. We don't look down on them as examples of what not to do. We see them as models of inspiration and sources of energy for us. So what if that was you one day? What if that was all of us? What if we are meant to live lives that will bear fruit that we will never taste? What if God's purpose for us is to join the great cloud of witnesses who point the way to a horizon that we will not live to reach? These are questions that we don't think to ask in our instant gratification, guaranteed results world, but they are the questions that Jesus asks of us. We may never see the glory of the world that God dreams of, and yet, we are invited to live for it. There will be division. There will be times when God seems far off instead of close by and right at our backs. But with our capacity to trust, our capacity for faith, that will not be the end of the story. And so friends, I ask you this morning, isn't that worth a try? Amen. I invite you to stand as you are comfortable and let us join our voices together in proclaiming the church's faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified and has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead. 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Good morning, St. Michael's. My name is Sam Sue. Please join me in the prayers of the people. During the silences, please add your own prayers either aloud, in your heart, or by typing them into the chat box or comment bar. When I say, God of grace, please respond, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, enliven the church for its mission, that we may be salt of the earth and light of the world. Breathe fresh life into your people. Give us power to reveal Christ in word and action. Let us pray for the church, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Andrew, Alan, and Mary, our bishops, for the committee to elect a bishop, for the parishioners, lay leaders, clergy, and staff, of St. Michael's, for all those at work on our parish renovation, for our new partner parish, St. Peter's in Eaton Square, London, and for our friends at St. Luke's Church and school, and school in Martel, Haiti. God of grace, hear our prayer. Creator of all, lead us into ways of justice and peace that we may respect one another in freedom and truth. Awaken in us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. Teach us to care creatively for its resources. Let us pray for the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Spirit of truth, inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others, that all may act with integrity and courage Give grace to all whose lives are linked with ours. May we serve Christ in one another and love as Christ loves us. Let us pray for our community. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of hope, Comfort and restore all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. May they know the power of your healing love. Give comfort to those who mourn and bring them peace in their time of loss. Make us willing agents of your compassion. Strengthen us as we share in making people whole. We pray for Sherry, Scott, Evelyn, Albert and Jess, Ed and Sally, Werner, Peter, Sue Ann and David, Tucker, Mary Catherine, Jillian, Percival. God of grace, hear our prayer. God, into your hands we commend those who have died. We pray for Catherine Vegan. May her example inspire and encourage us. God of grace, hear our prayer.
Eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. And friends, may the peace of Christ be always with you. Share the peace with one another. Peace with you. Well, friends, it is customary at this time that as we come uh, approach the table of the Lord that we offer to God our first fruits, the best of what we have from our bounty. We bring gifts of bread and wine to the altar to share and our monetary gifts as well, all of which we use to live as Christ's body in the world. As you are able, please continue to give your gift to St. Michael's. Information for giving uh, is posted in the chat box or comments bar online. And if you are present in church, there is a plate in the back of the sanctuary. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice for all.
May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption, and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate Christ's death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our forebears, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Holy One, accept these prayers and praises through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray.
table in body and in spirit. Wherever you are on your journey of faith, you are welcome here. For those of you who are at home, this is a time to find your something simple to eat and drink if you want to participate symbolically in the Eucharist. For those of us here in the church, you are welcome to come forward and receive. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God.
In the name of St. Michael's Church, I send you out bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go will share with us in Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share in one bread, one cup. We stand as you are comfortable for our prayer after communion. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Savior. Amen. Be seated for just a moment. Um, again, uh, welcome to all of you who are worshiping with us today, and especially if you are visiting with us. We're so honored by your presence. Um, we would love to get to know more about you if, uh, and where God might be uh, in your journey, uh, your spiritual journey. And, and uh, if you look at the back of your bulletin, there are two QR codes, um, and those can... I don't know why I need to point them out. You have eyeballs. but <laughs> You can uh, follow those QR codes. They will take you to places um, that will help us to connect a little more, um, and certainly we can be further in touch and uh, see how God is at work in your life. Um, I thank you again to Joe, and I forget your last name, but uh, Damon's friend, Joe, who has, 
um, who has been uh, on, on the, all of the tech controls this morning. Thank you for pitching in. We know Damon will return to us in due time. He just, his travel got a little um, snagged. Uh, and also thank you to Stacey Kim, who is our online chaplain today. You didn't get to see her face on the screen, but thank you, Stacey, for uh, chaplaining us online as well. In two Sundays on August 28th, just want to call your attention to the blood drive that we'll be hosting. Um, there is actually a critical blood shortage right now in New York, and so uh, come receive the blood of Christ and then go to the reception room and give the blood of your veins to people who need it. Um, and I think you get a free t-shirt in addition to your cookies this time around if you need that incentive. Um, but it is a, a good and holy thing to do, so I commend that to you. Um, Sign-ups for that can be followed by um, the QR codes on the back of your bulletin. John, you want to give us a renovation update? Uh, if you've been hanging around the last couple of weeks, you might be walking into some walls that weren't there before. So can you tell us about that, John? Joe will turn it on in a second. Can you hear me, Ian? Uh, Hello? There yes, we okay. Yes, uh, the renovation, long awaited, has started. If you walk past the garden, you'll see a big wall there. And uh, if you walk into the parish house, you will see an, uh, a wall uh, there in the hallway also. And uh, these walls are, there's a lot of activity happening behind those walls. They are there to protect us, to keep all the dirt and debris on the work side of of the process and to keep our spaces, which uh, we continue to use and which our tenants continue to use, uh, safe and clear on, on the other side. There's a lot happening um, and there's discoveries going on as we go. You know, as you open spaces, you discover stuff that you thought you knew, but you realize you, you don't know. Uh, I have a lot of confidence in our contractor, they're, they're experienced, I can tell they know what they're doing, and uh, the process is moving. Uh, it will take probably about a year to get it all done, and we thank you for your patience while it's happening. The, the door over here behind the chapel that we usually use to access the parish house, that is now closed. Uh, you, if you want to get into the parish house, you, you've got to go to the back of the church and walk through the angel room. and So we have these improvised spaces, but the intent is to keep the church functioning in a normal way. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions. The vestry has gotten a lot of questions. The vestry has raised a lot of questions about um, you know, how we're doing this, how we're positioned to do it, uh, both logistically and financially. and. We've done a lot of analysis to uh, arrive at, I, I think, a fairly high level of confidence that we're on the right road. But let's face it, we always have to be humble about things. Um, just look at today's readings. Some of them are really monitory. You've got uh, Jeremiah telling us, beware of false prophets and who you believe. You've got Jesus in the, bi in the gospel telling us that uh, Look forward to division as you follow my way. And uh, what side is right, what side is wrong. There are all of these monitory things uh, that we hear, hear today. But then we also hear in Hebrews, uh, faith takes you where you need to go. And uh, in all humility, I, th I, I, I think we have faith uh, that we're on the right track, that we're going to pull this off and that years from now, long, long past when we're all here, uh, people will look back and say, that was a good thing to do. Uh, I, I think they did the same thing when the, this church building was constructed back in the 1890s. They, they did it with faith. It was a momentous thing to do, but they, they knew that it was for posterity. And here we are. 120 years later and um, ready to take another step and we've done pretty well over as a, as a church over 120 years uh, with, with this building and we want it to be something that serves our people and our neighbors 
for decades to come and that welcomes our neighbors in. Everybody needs to have access into our space in a modern way, in a safe way. And uh, we're in the process now of creating that. And thank you all for your patience and for putting faith in the process. And may we humbly but confidently keep moving. Thank you. Thanks, John. Please stand for our final blessing. Live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road. And may the blessing of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be with you always. Amen. Thank you.